the golden calf, these things are happening, notice this, in the church in the last days. Because this is very, very important. Why? Because this did not have to take place. If we don't stand for what we know is truth, man, we're in trouble. We must speak truth and leave the results to God. Hello, friends, and welcome once again to Behold the Lamb Presents. I'm Chris Shelton, your host. I want to thank you for joining us. Today, we're going to begin a two-part series that we have entitled The Golden Calf. And what a story we find in the book of Exodus, chapter 32, a story of a people who had witnessed one supernatural miracle after another as the God of heaven had worked in their behalf to free them from their torturous bondage in Egypt. Yet, shortly after this time of horrifying plagues, the parting of the Red Sea, and experiencing God's presence as they surrounded Mount Sinai, this mixed multitudes of people brought out from Egypt began to withdraw back to their heathen practices that they were all too familiar with that they had experienced back in Egypt. They had begun to look to Moses for all their spiritual guidance. And since God had once again called Moses up into Mount Sinai, completely out of their sight, their faith in these miraculous miracles began to waver. And they called upon Moses' brother Aaron to make them a God that they could physically see like the ones that they had in Egypt. During this message, Pastor Kenny Shelton will look at this story as left in God's holy word and through God's leading, give us guidance from which we may glean from their experience so that we may not fall into the same types of grievous sins as they did. God's desire is for us by faith and knowledge to remain steadfast in the truth and to stay in favor with Him who desires to rescue us from our chains of sin and eternal death. Thank you for joining us once again here at Behold the Lamb Ministries. You know what a blessing that you are. We're glad that you decided you're going to tune in. You're going to watch Behold the Lamb Ministry. As we present, by the grace of God, you know, very important subject. We realize from time to time uh, what the hour that we're living in is so, so very important that we, you know, cover some of these things that are going on in the world. And certainly Bible prophecy. And certainly studying the books of Daniel and Revelation. We need not be surprised at what's happening in the world. But sad to say, even the people that should know better... It's going to be like, oh, we're caught. It's almost like an overwhelming surprise because we're not ready, maybe because we haven't been studying the Word of God. Now, I know that you're not one of those, but just in case there are some that's watching or listening, if you're one of those, I just encourage you to get into the Word of God. Again, we're glad that you joined us. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. To get this message around the world, I, I can't tell you how grateful and thankful that I am to realize that the message is and what goes on in this little church it doesn't stay here. It does not stay here. It goes to, you know, every, we call every nation kindred tongue and people. We will not know until glory if by the grace of God we get there. All that God has done, be able to get into prisons and to get into places, of, you know, 3 ABN bring this message out. And we're having the opportunity to work along with them. We so appreciate that very much. As we're going to be talking about the golden calf, we're going to do it in two parts. And they, they connect together, so bless your heart, you won't want to miss either one of them. And I, I think it's so prevalent to today in the hour that we're living in. But I always feel a need of prayer. We pray several times before this, and we're going to pray right now. And uh, those of you who watch Behold the Lamb know that we kneel here. And I just ask that maybe you pray with me. If you want to kneel, fine. If you don't, if you're driving down the road and you're listening or whatever, keep your eyes on the road. We'll pray. <laughs> Loving Father in heaven, we thank you again for the privilege of prayer. Lord, we ask now for an anointing of thy Holy Spirit upon every mind and every heart. Lord, I know I need you. My mind's not good. You know that. But I know under the unction of the Holy Spirit, you'll put words in my mind and my heart and my tongue that will come forward. And you'll help each and every one of us to understand that which is so vital to us in the hour that we're living in. Bless us now, we pray. Forgive me of any sin, anything in my heart and life that does not need to be there. Lord, we realize that we're just, that we're nothing. But you're everything. Bless us, we pray, with your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we're going to be talking about the golden calf, so take your Bible and turn to the book of uh, Exodus. I think maybe it would just be good if we read that just to start with Exodus chapter uh, 
32, Exodus chapter 32, and we're going to just read about four verses there, and this will give us the background of what we're going to be talking about. Now again, you'd have to read the whole chapter, it's going to take so long to be able to get all through it, that's why I thought maybe we should do it in two parts, pick out certain things that I believe that's so very essential to us as God's people, and I know they're essential to me, because you know why? I want heaven to be my home, and I know that you do too. The golden calf, now Exodus chapter 32, 1 through 4. Let's begin with verse 1. Are you, are, you have it? I hope you have it. If not, jot it down and you can read it a little bit later or just listen right now. Starting with verse, uh, uh, chapter 32, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down. Did you notice what happened? What was the word there? Delayed. You know, most people don't like to be delayed. I don't want people delayed. I don't like to go to airport and it's delayed. Look upon their delay, delay, delayed. I like to get with a program and get things is anybody else like that? Get things done. I don't like delay. And so you know, sometimes when we're delayed, we, we find things to do that we shouldn't be doing. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together and said unto Aaron, Hmm. Huh. Said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. And as for this already, do you know, as for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land, <laughs> out of the land of uh, Egypt, we want not what become of him. We don't know what's come. He's been gone for a few days, and we don't know where he's at. We need some kind of a God. We need some kind of a leader. We need something we can see. Notice, and Aaron said to them, Break off those golden earrings which are in your ears, and your wives, and your sons, and your daughters, and bring them unto me. It sounds like a backslidden people to me. Is it okay to say that? Verse 3, And all the people break off their golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. After he made it hmm, a molten calf, and they said, These be thy God. Did you get that, O Israel? Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Man, how they changed their tune. They began to sing another song, did they not? First of all, it was Moses that led them out, and pretty soon, oh, it's this golden calf here that led us out. Interesting how fast, and sometimes that can happen even to us when we're going through this COVID thing, and the churches are shut down, and the doors are locked, as it were, for a while, or you can't have do what you want to do in the church, so everybody kind of reserved a little bit, and all of a sudden, we lose our insight, we lose our spiritual connection with our Heavenly Father, we lose it. And pretty soon we've forgotten what we had experienced before that kept us, you know, alive in the cause of Christ. Five Testimonies 160. Satan's snares are laid for us as barely as they were laid for the children of what? Israel, just prior to their entrance into the land of what? Canaan land, yeah. We are there right now as a church, as a people, just before, right, Jesus comes entering the land of Canaan, just before Jesus comes, that some big things are going on that God wants us to understand, that the devil is going to lay what? He's going to lay some snares. Now, some of the snares would be, some of you won't hear a thing that's being said today. I'm not saying for anybody here, but let's just be honest about it. You want heaven to be your home, we need to what? Keep, keep, keep awake and keep our eyes and heart and our mind upon Jesus Christ. Because we'll leave and we'll say, well, I don't even know what was going on here. God's given a chance what for us to hear and to understand, and it is a warning that He gives, and we'll be in trouble, as it were, if we don't listen. Notice, you think about it, the children of Israel just prior to the entrance. So, notice this, the last line says this, we are repeating the history of that people. Now, should we be concerned? Should we maybe talk about something else? Let's talk about COVID. Let's talk about the shots that are being given and the, and the hope that's given a lot of people and the rejection that many other people are rejecting. All the deaths and all the things that's going on. No, right now is because he said the golden calf. Right now it's being repeated in the history of God's people. So we need to understand what it is so that we no longer have anything to do with it. So we know this. God delivered Israel right at the Red Sea, did he not? After that, they traveled through the, the wilderness toward Mount Sinai. They arrived at Mount Sinai, notice this, and God had a special meeting with what we call the 70 elders, and He made a covenant with Israel. I love the covenant. You should love the covenant. And it, it seemed that when you make a covenant, it's between two parties, isn't that right? And both parties have to keep the agreement or it's broken. 
And it seemed like they said, all that you say, Lord, we're going to do, so it's all good. Now what happened? Moses leaves the camp because, you know, he's going to go up on the mount, isn't that right? Mount Sinai to get the, the law of God. God's going to write it with his own finger. And notice who was left in charge. Who was left in charge? Aaron was left in charge. Who was Aaron? It's his brother, and he was the high priest. So he should have been the man that knew what was going on. He should have known what was going on. Now, God knew it to begin with, isn't that right? He already knew what was going to take place. Moses was in the dark until God said, You better get back down because your brother's lost it. I'm paraphrasing. You better go on down. Moses, you see, went to the mount, and Aaron then, he was to guide, and he was to guard the people, and then things went haywire. I mean, they really went haywire. Letter 10 in 1896 says this. This is what we're going to focus on as, as, as much time as we can today with 30 minutes or so. It says, this neglect, letter 10, 1896, this neglect to stand up firmly for the truth was the sin of Aaron. Somebody listening. What was the sin of Aaron? This neglect to stand up firmly for what? For the truth was the sin of Aaron. Do you realize what he just said? The article just said it was a sin because Aaron, the high priest, that's any of us, that didn't stand for what is truth. For what you understand is truth. We realize that in principle right if we don't stand for what we know is truth man we're in trouble had he spoke the truth plainly the golden calf would not have been made notice this reading on the same spirit that led him to shun to declare the whole truth for fear of offending led him to uh, to act a falsehood notice that you ever get so far gone sometime all of a sudden all you can tell is a lie and then another lie and then another lie Pointing to the golden calf as a representative of the one who brought them out of Egypt. Thus, one unfaithfulness leads to another. Now, that's heavy duty. So I think if we examine that today in time that we have, it will be covering an awful lot. So I may move loud and fast. Because this is very, very important. Why? Because this did not have to take place. This didn't have to take place. But it's taking place right now, among us right now. And most of us have no idea it's taking place. We hear it and we just ignore it and it doesn't matter. I believe it matters. Patriarchs and Prophets 3.23 said, If Aaron had the courage to stand for right, irrespective of consequences, he could have prevented that apostasy. Concerning Aaron, notice this, And the Lord was very displeased, angry with Aaron, and would, would have destroyed him if, if Moses hadn't stepped in and interceded. Praise God for intercession. Amen. Praise God. Part two, we're going to go dissect even more and deeper into this to see why it was caused and why the people of God so willingly followed. That's not going to be you, I'm sure. By the grace of God, you're not going to follow after what men is teaching and what they're preaching out there and they're throwing today. God's looking for a people. By the grace of God, in Revelation what, 12, 14, you're talking about here. Uh, you know, they're talking about keeping the commandments of God, have the faith of Jesus. He's looking for a people today who stand true and firm to the very end. Will that be you? Will that be me? You know, will that be you? Will it be me? This is the time. What are we wasting it for? That may not be anybody here, but just, just let me beg for a minute here and plead with you just for why. Right now, we need every opportunity that we have to learn what is truth and be able to give it to somebody else. Your life is on the line. My life is on the line. There's a, we're going to have to draw that, that line in the sand. You have to do, be determined today, like I do, to draw that line in the sand and say, by God's grace. By God's grace, I want to make it there.